Okay, well, uh, my name's Dan. I'm from Intelligent Designs out of uh, Vancouver, Canada. This is our robot logo. And uh, this is my first NAM, actually. So um, we brought down a bunch of the stuff that we put out uh, over the last three years. A lot of these are our latest modules. Um, some have just been literally released, like they're shipping right now, including the new Corgasmatron 2, which is a dual multi-mode filter based on the same transfer function as the Korg MS-20, but it's completely different electronics and goes way beyond the sound of that. Um, it has a crossfader linking the two sides so that you can switch into different modes, be able to morph between them in smooth ways. And, uh, and then there's different routings so that you can have series or parallel between the two. Um, this is our, our flagship oscillator. It's a uh, through zero FM. So there's not very many oscillators that can do this actually, and this is a completely novel implementation of this. So beyond uh, the deep FM capabilities, uh, we've tried to generate as many different kinds of waveforms as we could that would be useful. Some of these are maybe uh, haven't been seen on since before, like our, our zigzag waveform. We have things like uh, the sub oscillator output, which is based on the SH-101 circuit so that you can layer with other sounds to get really fat uh, waveforms. And we have some specialty things like the double saw, because when you use those with things like uh, square waves and you crossfade them, you can get really interesting sounds that are uh, kind of Bukla-esque. He's used that as the foundation for a lot of, uh, of, of his designs, like the 259. Next to this, we've got the planar, which is, uh, I guess you could say is similar to the, the joystick on something like the Prophet BS. There's nothing else like this in the analog world. It's a morphing, vector mixer, so I can feed four sounds and I can morph between them smoothly to get one output. And then I can use it the opposite way, I can put four signals in and, um, or sorry, one signal in and then pan them to four different outputs. So you can use it as a quad panner, spin sounds around your head, or you can um, like steer one signal to multiple different signal paths, like um, one goes to a filter, a wave folder, a fact, something like that. So it's, it's, it's would pretty it, creative. Would it handle CV as well? Oh, totally. So you could, you, could, you could morph CV, and then on top of that, you can also feed CV in. Um, we set it up so that, let's say you have a CV recorder, like the ModCan CV recorder, or something that we're going to put out later. You can morph a really complex sequence. It generates CV, record it, turn the joystick off, which zeroes it, plug the CV back in here, and then you'd be able to replay that sequence. Um, otherwise, you could just use this straight up as generating a CV while you're morphing the sound sources that they're coming from, all that stuff. It's Oh, and you'll see also that as I'm moving, this blue light comes on. That's a sense circuit, so that as you, as you it detects movement of the joystick, and it automatically generates a gate. So you can have a, a sound gated on as you're moving. And lots of extra functions there, right? Totally. Um, and then over here, this uh, Frankenstein is our new sequencer. Um, still uh, about a month away. And uh, this is originally based on something that came out of the UK called the, uh, the RIC M185, but we've gone way beyond that. It's a uh, kind of algorithmic, but pretty intuitive. It's got quantizers, uh, TB303 style slide, um, all sorts of scale and uh, shifting functions. Like yeah, that's what the, the, the final one will look like. So this will be our, hopefully our sequencing beast. Um, I could, uh, right now it's sequencing just something on the, the Rubicon, so I can turn that up a little bit if you want to hear. On the Core Gazmatron, we, we wanted it to be able to be clean if you dial things back, but we also wanted it to get into like dirty territory. So there's hard and soft clipping. I would say on the spectrum we're mid-range, so we, we're not the cheapest, but we're definitely not the most expensive. We're trying to find a balance with quality and uh, and features. Thank you very much. Thanks.